A forked rod or branch of a tree that, in the hands of certain people, is claimed to reveal the presence of water and minerals beneath the ground by means of spasmodic motions of different intensity. The rod is traditionally made of hazelwood and takes the form of a bee. The operator will hold both ends in their hands. It has been asserted that other types of materials, such as right angle wire rods, are just as effective. Diviners assert that the rod undergoes arabic force and twists or turns when the operator passes over subsurface water or minerals. They say this happens because of the action of rabdic force. The word rod in Greek is the origin of the English word rabdic. In the historical documents of ancient Egypt, there is a reference to a rod that was employed in the practice of divination. This ancient divining rod was a sort of rhabdomancy, which can be loosely translated as divination by means of small pieces of stick. Both Cicero and Tacitus wrote about the rod known as Virgula Divina. In Germany, it was known as the Wunschelrut, which translates to wishing rod, and it was utilized in the same way that modern-day fortune tellers use playing cards, coffee grounds, or tea leaves. The rods are often fashioned from hazel, but have also been fashioned from the wood of many kinds of nutting fruit trees, including white and black thorn as well as privet. In other instances, the forked rod is not even necessary because the unusual sensation that is felt in the arms, hands, and body is sufficient to signal the presence of water. Other items that are utilized include pieces of watch spring and copper wire. Dowsers move over the ground while holding the ends of the fork in the palms of their hands and pointing the rod downward. When the rod moves abruptly turning upward in the hand for water or turning downward for minerals the dowser knows they have arrived at the location where the target object can be found. There were quite a few attempts made to explore the phenomenon using scientific methods. The electrical or magnetic theory was debunked in the year 1654 by Father Kircher who balanced the rod on a frictionless support like a delicate pair of scales. He discovered that in this position, nothing would induce it to move over hidden water or metal. Instead, it must be held by a human being before the movements can take place. Michel Chevreul, a French savant, put up the hypothesis that involuntary muscular motion occurs in the year 1854. The Theory and Practice of Dowsing While, then, do so many people rely on it if there has never been a comprehensive research to demonstrate that it is effective. It seems that science can also shed light on the reasons why so many individuals believe that dowsing is effective. The success of dowsing can be linked, more so than to any kind of metaphysical intervention, to a phenomenon that is referred to as the ideomotor effect. First, a quick diversion into the realm of consciousness before we get to that. At some level, each of us is mindful of the activities we take consciously, when we wish to open a door, we first consider the necessary steps, and then we carry them out. Toward a theory of dowsing. Since that time, numerous competing hypotheses regarding the driving force behind water divining have been proposed, but there has been no attempt to reach a common understanding. Many people who practice dowsing assert that they can read the rays of the earth or its magnetism. Some people have the opinion that there must be some kind of clairvoyant capacity involved. It is probable that a number of factors are involved the precise nature of which can vary depending on the ability and experience of the diviner. It is a widely held belief that some kind of force acts on the muscles through the neurological system, and that this force can be blocked by wearing particular kinds of materials, such as gloves made of silk or wool, shoes made of rubber, or tight bandages on the arms or legs. The impact is somewhat comparable to the feelings that some people report having while sitting in on spiritualist seances. The diviner will receive a signal that the rod is ready to move when they feel a tingling sensation in their arms and legs, muscular contractions, giddiness, or profuse perspiration. These sensations can also be caused by excessive sweating. These events come to an abrupt halt once a certain location on the ground is reached, leaving behind a feeling of fatigue. There have also been dowsers who react to the presence of oil underground, sometimes describing symptoms of fainting, and their operations have not required the use of a rod. These dowsers have been successful in finding oil. Instructions for using a dowsing rod. Instruments of one's trade. After you have obtained a dowsing rod or rods, the technique consists of a few straightforward actions to be carried out. Before beginning their work, some dowsers find it helpful to have a conversation with their rods. You have the option of asking the rods for assistance, or if you feel more at ease with this approach, you can pray to the gods of your tradition for direction. Either option works very nicely, Start your slow walk with the rods held away from your body in an outstretched position. You have the option of walking in a pattern some people like to take an approach similar to a grid or you can simply let your instincts direct your steps. While you stroll, keep your attention fixed on the objective. What exactly are you trying to find? 
Are you seeking water? Treasure buried underground. Make sure that you keep your focus on the objective. It is an indication that the target is getting closer when the end of the V-Rod begins to move or when the two L-Rods begin to cross over one another. When you go closer to the movement, you will typically be able to see it more clearly. When you get the sensation that you have arrived at the correct location, it is important to pause and verify if your assumption is accurate. If you feel like you aren't making any progress because the rods aren't reacting, you're just walking in circles, and you've dug 10 holes but haven't found anything noteworthy, then you need to take a break. You could also try coming back in a later time of day or even on a different day. It's also a good idea to experiment with different kinds of fishing rods and reels, as some anglers find they have more luck with particular kinds of rods. Dowsing can even be done with the help of a pendulum. Dowsing for beginners. The vast majority of dowsers will tell you that anyone can become skilled at dowsing. Nevertheless, just like any other psychic exercise, it takes some practice to become proficient. You may improve your talents on your own with a few straightforward ways of practice. You're going to need the assistance of a friend for all of these things. You may ask someone to conceal something in your home for you, such as a piece of jewelry, a little jar of cash, or something else entirely. Try your hand at dowsing by using rods to see if you can find it. For dowsing, it is helpful to have a map of the area you are working in. You may challenge a friend to go anywhere in the neighborhood without revealing their destination to you beforehand. It may be determined which portion of the neighborhood they are in by holding a pendulum over a map and swinging it back and forth. You can verify your information by calling them on their mobile phone. Have a friend bury a bottle of water in the backyard or another outside area. Many dowsers believe that humans have an innate desire to be near water. Hence, doing so should be an effective method for you to hone your dowsing skills. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.